Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Presenting the King. You know, when we present the King, we're presenting the Word of God because the King, King Jesus, is the Word. He was the Word made flesh and came and was around us and among us and, and you could touch Him and you could see Him. Um, but then the parts of Himself that came to the earth to release, He, he dispersed it to all of the body of Christ he gave the pastors, it says Ephesians 4.11, He gave the pastors, evangelists, the teachers. All that He was are now out in the, the, the body of Christ. And I'm so excited to have with us today Reverend Sharon Sargent. She is a prophet, she's a, uh, an evangelist, and she's a prophetic teacher. And she's going to teach on that prophetic priesthood that was released out, uh, actually all of the priesthood that was released out. But before we go into the, the message for today, I want to remind you of resources that Celebration Ministries has. Uh, we have books, we have prophetic worship CDs, you can go on our website. But I wanna tell you about one of my books. I've written seven books. And I wanna tell you about this one book, Kingdom Alignment. Because today with all of our, our massive challenges globally, the kingdom of heaven must come together in unity. We must align one with another and align with the king as never before. And I think this book, Kingdom Alignment, will help you, will help explain and teach prophetically about the kingdom and what the kingdom is there doing. The kingdom is alive and well. <laughs> Things may look dark, but the kingdom is a great light in the world. And so I I recommend this Kingdom Alignment book. You can get it on Amazon in Kindle format. You can get it uh, in ebook form on our website. You can download it from our website, Kingdom Alignment. So Sharon, teach us about the new priesthood, the new prophetic priesthood that is emerging. Well, I wanted to share today that there is a new prophetic priesthood. Mm -hmm. The old pre priesthood could be compared to um, the sons of Levi, and which <clears throat> Samuel, um, the sons of Levi were, were at the time of Samuel, when he was a little boy mm -hmm. and his mom brought him to, to, um, to Eli. I'm sorry, to Eli. Anyways, um, Eli was, they says in this word, he was heavy and his eyes were dim. Mm -hmm. He couldn't see. Yeah. And obviously he wasn't really hearing from the Lord, but Samuel, which represents the new prophetic priesthood, laid before the ark, the presence of God, until his spiritual ears were open. And what's interesting, it's our hearing that I think is one of the first to be developed, the senses, but it's the last to go. Mm. So his spiritual ears were opened in, in, the, in the anointing. And um, anyways, he gave Eli a, a word saying that his two sons were gonna die and the priesthood was gonna be taken from them and God was gonna raise up a new priesthood. Mm. And the reason why is because Eli's sons were into um, women and, and, and they were into taking the best of the offering before it was, uh, they would take it to roast it instead of boiling it. They weren't following instructions. And so God said, I'm gonna raise up a new priesthood. Mm -hmm. Now Samuel came from the outside, but he, he comes in and he is a prophet, mm -hmm. he's a seer. He's a judge. He's a counselor. And he also acts as um, kind of like in a kingly anointing because he even helped them against the Philistines in, in securing their, their, um, 
their ground, told him what to do, and he spoke, and God thundered, and they all left. I mean, so it's a pretty amazing story. If you read in 1 Samuel, you can read about Samuel starting as part of the new prophetic priesthood. Oh, I love that. And so um, the other prophetic priesthood, other example of the prophetic priesthood would be the sons of Zadok, Zadok, which also came out of Levi. They were a remnant, but they were during the time of David. And so these priests and the new prophetic priesthood, they are not passed down by tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, religion is passed down by tradition. But these priests, the sons of Zadok, they had a love for God. And so, um, let me go. The main issue with the sons of, of Eli is 1 Samuel 2.12. And it says, the sons of Eli were base and worthless. They did not know or regard the Lord. You can be in ministry and not know the Lord. That's true. You can be a pastor and not really know the Lord. And so the Lord says out of Isaiah 29, 13, these people are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is nothing but, but man-made rules learned by um, note. So in other words, in the Amplified Version, it says that their hearts and minds were far from me. Their, their, and their fear and reverence for me was just a commandment learned by repetition. Ooh, that'll preach. And that's Isaiah 29, 13. So in other words, the old priesthood mm -hmm. didn't know the Lord, didn't love the Lord, didn't hunger for the Lord, and they didn't desire for him. When Eli died, the, the ark was captured, his two sons were killed, he fell backwards, he was heavy, but that was just a reflection of the carnality of the priesthood. Yeah and his eyes were dim. But listen to what it says, what the Lord says in 1 Samuel 2, 35. He prophesies, I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart. Sound familiar? Like David? Yeah. David, the king? What's so interesting is he did the same in the priesthood what he did with the king. The priesthood had to go through a transformation. And he'll do what's in my heart and mind, and I'll firmly establish his house, and they will minister before my anointed one always. That's forever. So it was under Samuel that they, had, we, they asked for a king, and yeah. God gave him a king. Now Samuel <clears throat> is a priest prophet, and he is ministering to the king. So prophets are called to be, they can have priestly roles and to minister to leaders. And so Samuel was so prophetic, it says in 1 Samuel 3, 19 through 21, Samuel grew, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. Mm. Everyone knew he was a prophet. The Lord continued to appear in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to, Sa to Samuel in Shiloh through the word of God. Oh, that's powerful. So powerful. prophets, priest prophets, we need to know the word of God. The word has to be the foundation inside of us. Right. We don't live by experience. He says we live by the word. We live everything by the word. And so Samuel, in 1 Samuel 7, 15, it says, Samuel continued as Israel's judge for the rest of his life. And so, um, anyways, 
Now talking about the priest of Zadok, God does everything by visual. The Bible, he gives visual examples. Jesus taught with parables. It's so that we can see and then we can walk into that vision. That's good. So we are seeing a new prophetic priesthood um, and that is sold out, surrendered, holy, pure, passionate lovers of God, mm -hmm. prophetic eyes to see, and they seek the face of God oh, daily. That's powerful. They're intimate with the king, pure-hearted, worshipers, yielded, meek, and of no reputation. Ooh, no reputation. So this is the new prophetic priesthood. So Zadok, listen to what it says on Zadok. And um, it says, the king said to Zadok, King David, to the priest, are you not a seer? And I'm sorry, my, my verse reference um, evaporated right there. So give the, give the reference and you can see it. Yeah, so it's out of, um, I want to say it's out of Ezekiel, but anyways. But he said, Zadok, to the priest, are you not a seer? Um, Moses said out of Numbers 11:29, I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets. Mm -hmm. and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. We're all supposed to walk with vision, right. no matter what. Right. We're all supposed to see. That's right. We're not supposed to be in the dark. We're supposed to walk in the light. And the closer that you walk to the Lord, who is the light of the world, mm -hmm. the closer that you are to him, the light that's in him will, will reflect and be that's upon good. you. That's good. And, and the more you walk in unity and alignment and oneness, the more the light will shine. So now this is um, Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So mm. we're called to see, to encounter this new prophetic generation. Now, and this Psalm 24, 6 says that we are, this is the Psalm about the glory the king of glory coming in. This is the generation of those who diligently seek and require him mm -hmm. as their greatest need, mm -hmm. who seek the face of, of God like Jacob. And then it says Selah. Now, in the New King James, it says, this is Jacob, the generation who seeks your face. Mm -hmm. Now, what's so prophetic about that is that Jacob means deceiver. So he didn't say that this is Israel, the generation that seeks God's face. He says, this is Jacob, the deceiver, because once we seek his face and we start engaging him with the heart, then we can be changed like Jacob. Jacob when he wrestled with the Lord for the blessing. Mm -hmm. In Hosea, I think it's 12, 6, it says that, that the actual word there is contending. He wept, he repented, he sought his face, and then God blessed him, and then the sun rose up, meaning that he left transformed, yeah. permanently changed. Mm -hmm in the face and the presence of God. Anytime that you read, and this happened at Penuel, anytime that you read the word face, Penin, Penuel, in the Bible, it means presence. When Adam and Eve um, sinned and they hid themselves from the presence, that Hebrew word was Penin, they, set, they hid from the face. Face and presence right. are one. Mm -hmm. So this new prophetic priesthood is the face seeking, the face place, Ooh, I love that. the face place. Yes, I know. We got to get in the face place. Yes. Jesus redeemed the face yes, place. He did. When he said to Satan, Satan was in his face saying, if you'll do this, if you'll bow down and worship me. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. 
for Matthew 4, 4, for it is written. That's right. And that this place here, this face-to-face -face place here is reserved for the Lord. Mm. And that's what we should be putting in front of us, not just our iPads, not just our cell phones, right. not just the television, not just, you know, the world events. We've got to get God in, the, in our face place. So it goes on to say in Psalm 24 that it says, lift up your heads, O you gates. We're the gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. But when did the King of glory come in? After they got in the face place. The face place, the intimacy is first. And then out of that intimacy comes the glory and the presence. Amen. Because we're transformed into his same image. I believe it's 1 Corinthians 3.16. From glory to glory, as we behold him in a mirror, from glory to glory. So in 2 Samuel 15.24, it says, There was Zad Zadok also, and the Levites were with him, bearing the Ark of the Covenant. In other words, they were carrying, it goes on to say, the king said to Zadok, carry the Ark of God, carry the presence of God yep. back into the city. Mm -hmm. We've got to carry the presence of God into our cities. Right. into our towns, mm -hmm. into our churches, mm -hmm. into our neighborhoods. What else he says about this new prophetic priesthood, Ezekiel 44, and I believe it's verse 9. It says, this is what the sovereign Lord says. No foreigners, including those who live among the people of Israel, will enter my sanctuary who have not been circumcised who have not surrendered themselves to the Lord. Mm. He's talking about a circumcision of the heart. Mm -hmm. The old prophetic priesthood is not engaged in the heart level. Right. The new prophetic priesthood is engaged mm -hmm. with the Lord. And <clears throat> did you have something? No, no, that's okay. good. And it's then really in Ezekiel 44, verse 15, this priesthood gets to minister to the Lord. What do priests do? They minister first to the king, the king of kings, and then they may minister before the king on behalf of the people, and then they may just minister directly to the people. There's three main priestly roles that they have they, and then they may offer up sacrifices but they're to minister to the Lord so it's the Zadok priesthood the new priesthood the ones that love God and oh, are willing to obey him it says in Ezekiel 44 15 however the Levitical priest of the family of Zadok continue to minister faithfully in the temple when Israel abandoned me for idols. These men, or women, I'll say or women, will serve as ministers. They will stand in my presence and offer mm -hmm. the fat of the, and, and the blood of the sacrifices. They alone will enter my sanctuary, the holy of holies, holy place, approach my table, table of showbread, to serve me. They will fulfill all of my requirements. So we're serving a king, and there's protocol with the king, and we are, we are in a process of learning that protocol, but what we do here on earth will establish our level of intimacy with the Lord forever. So we want to be as close and as intimate as we can now because we want to be in the sanctuary, in the temple, as close as possible to the Lord. Amen. 
And so the main thing, and, and I love this verse, and it says, Ezekiel 44, 28, the Lord is their inheritance. Yeah. The new prophetic priesthood are those that want the Lord. Mm -hmm. They don't want a name for themselves. That's it. They don't want a ministry. That's it. Per se. That's it. They don't want money, fame, power. They want him. Right. They want him. And so it says, the priest will not have any property or possession for I alone am their special possession. Ooh, so powerful. The sons of Eli lost their first love. And when Jesus gave that word in Matthew 25 about the first love to the five wise and the five foolish virgins, he was teaching to ministry leaders. It's possible to be in the ministry and lose your gaze. That's so true. We have to maintain the gaze. For yeah. what goes in our eye gates will get down into our heart gate. Yeah. And we have to position ourselves and stir that love up daily to worship and to love the Lord. And that's why I love Laura's ministry, Celebration Ministries, because it's about, there's so many visuals that she's done with the dance, with the flags, with the, with the worship that brings you into worship where it's like, I get so caught up in worship at mm -hmm. times that I am not part of this realm. I have literally been in the heavenlies before, looking down at the earth and hearing the Lord speak. Just absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. We, people today and the young generation, yeah. they need the encounter. That's right. They need the experience. Mm -hmm. And it says in James, if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. So um, as we just set him as the object of our desire, then he will start manifesting himself as the object of our, of, of our desire. And in Psalm 27, in talking about um, the beauty of the Lord, it says that, but this one thing I desire, one thing I've desired that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold his beauty. And so he is the greatest treasure. And so what the Lord is saying is that there are requirements to be able to be close to the Lord and to minister to him. Mm -hmm. And the priest of Zadok met those requirements because they were faithful. They loved the Lord. Yeah. They carried his presence. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think about, do you want anyone serving you, like bringing you a cup of water, like, you know, that like could care less about you? I mean, you know, if you're, if you're a king. So that is the new prophetic generation. And this prophetic generation, Isaiah 33, 17, it says that our eyes will see the king in his beauty. Mm. And in Psalm 96, 6, his stunning beauty will overwhelm mm. all who come before him. And it's our divine desire in Psalm, Song of Solomon 6, 12, that will bring us next to our beloved prince. Wonderful. So, um, so just in, just in closing, um, you know, where, how do you start? Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, how do you start yeah. in getting to be a priest that hears, a priest that sees? It all starts in the secret place. Psalm 91, 
dwelling. The word dwell in Hebrew means to actually sit down, to abide. Mm. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow mm. of El Shaddai. Mm. It is about knowing him. It is about, I believe in Hosea, it says it's time to seek the Lord until he comes and he showers and rains his presence upon you. Mm -hmm. He is the prize. And anything else that we do out of that comes out of first our service to him. So I would say, get in your prayer closet, get the distractions out and don't go by feelings. Yeah. We would never That's always important. feel like going in to pray today and, and seeking. We, 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 the, the, the veil was rent. So each time we got to just rent the veil, stir ourselves up. And whether it's through, the, we're going to go in through the word gate, through the worship gate, through the fellowship gate, um, whichever word, the decreeing gate, just get through the gate, get to him and then begin your journey with God. And then he's a king. He mm. loves to give gifts. One of the greatest gifts is the spirit of wisdom and understanding, Amen. the spirit of knowledge, Amen. revelation. We want to walk with sight. We do. And then we can help people. Yes. Amen. So let's pray um, that, that those that are listening, that they will have an open door to go into that place. We just have a, a minute or so left. We want to thank Sharon Reverend Sharon for coming, um, but pray over them before we, before we leave. So Lord, we just thank you for this new prophetic yes, generation that's arising. Mm -hmm. Ones that are passionate mm -hmm. lovers of God mm -hmm. and they love people with thank all of their God. heart. Yes, and ones that are sold out, mm -hmm. they're the bond servants. They're sold out mm -hmm. and surrendered to you. Amen. Lord, we just pray that every obstacle standing in the way of each and every one of us being prophets, being yes, prophetic, amen. like Moses mm -hmm. said, to be removed. Lord, we thank you for prophetic encounters, revelation yes, of amen. who you are yes, and amen. revelation of who we are. Yes. and who you created us to be yes, amen. and what you've created us to do. And Father, may we fulfill and may you fulfill mm -hmm. what God has called you to do and walking with him each and every day and being bringing him joy and pleasure in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.